<laughs> and when, <laughs> well, we saw it happen with with StarCraft too, right? I mean, when it's split between what GSL, I mean, GOM and and uh, is Rochi, wait, is GOM and who who's doing, who's doing pro, pro league? It was basically the the you know whenever GSL and Pro League kind of split, right? Or the the two companies. So. Um, you know, it, it never ends up good. One of the companies are going to fold. I mean, it, generally that's what happens, right? And mm. in this case, it's looking like OGN is that party, uh, which would be tragic given that they started the whole thing. Uh, but we'll see how it plays out. We'll again, it's going to be m probably another couple months or so before we, maybe even more, before we see it completely played out. Mm. But all right, let's move on. Let's uh, let's talk about the Game Awards. So we talked about we a couple episodes ago. We discussed the Game Awards, yeah. and I uh, didn't get a chance to really uh, talk about the results of it. But one thing did one piece of drama did occur during the actual broadcast. Uh, I was actually really sick during it, so I didn't get a chance to catch the entire thing. Mm. But at one point, uh, you know, Metal, Metal Gear Solid won. I, I believe it was best. What was it? Best was a role playing game, or let me see. Let me see what, what the category was. I, I'm trying. Let me bring up the category real quick. Uh, but they brought they won a particular award, and that that's when Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland came on the stage. And it was let's see, looks like it was best action adventure game. That's what it was. Mm. And uh, Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland goes up, and he accepted the award on behind you know on behalf. Of of course the you know just the creator of it you know Hideo Kojima right just mm -hmm. famous for for the Metal Gear Solid just creating the whole thing produ producing it mm -hmm. and uh, for those of you that don't know he and uh, Konami have had a falling out a and so serious falling yeah out. serious yeah. falling yeah. out and uh, so he was accepted for it and so people were like okay I guess Kojima wasn't there but then right after Keeper came off the stage uh, Jeff Knightley the host. Uh, explain to the reason as to why he wasn't there and it turns out that konami uh had their lawyers basically you know block kojima from showing up at the awards to you know to accept this kind of award mm. so that was kind of crazy uh what do you guys think of that well, I mean, this is, I mean, it's no, it's no secret uh, that, that uh, if we're talking about companies like Riot, uh, you know, Konami are right <laughs> up there in, in uh, the, the mainstream gaming industry for some of the ridiculous things that they've done. Uh, Jim Sterling, uh, Jim Sterling famously has the same sort of relationship with them as, as I do with Riot Games. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it's just absolutely absurd uh, when it gets to this sort of level of disrespect. There's no... Uh, there's no argument you can make that says not having Kojima there is, uh, is a good thing. There's just no sensible, salient argument you can present. Uh, you know, when you have these contract clauses in place where your employment is terminated or when you leave a job early, uh, these are usually put in there to prevent you coming back to the workplace. So you don't cause a disruption, don't cause a scene, don't cause problems, don't try and Shoot steal off your supplies. Yeah, exactly, right? Mm -hmm. Shoot the place up, exactly. That's yeah. why they're there. You don't uh, preclude someone from going to an award ceremony when a game that he fucking was behind <laughs> is being honored. I mean, that's just like a new level of fucking shit from this company. And there's just, there's no... There's, I, if, if there's an argument that you can make that says uh, he, he didn't deserve to be there, I'd love to hear it because I, I haven't heard it yet. I mean, I can understand the company. I, it's impossible to know like what all happened with the Hideo falling out with Kojima. Um, mm. Hideo, um, or no, um, with Konami. Sorry, um, Hideo's relationship with Konami has been like really fucking weird. It seems like it seems like I haven't read anything like definitive. Like I've always read like mm. speculation, but I've heard anything definitive. But it, but it seems like the falling out was like really brutal. Like they had like severe disagreements, and then. Hideo pieced the fuck out and it wasn't on good terms or anything. So, I mean, like, I guess I can kind of understand if Konami owns rights to the game, I can understand Konami not wanting someone to show up who might have a very sour feeling about the company. Because if the game won a major award or, you know, you had to accept an award or a nomination or whatever, and then somebody shows up and they've just recently been fired from your company and they hate your company, like, the things that they might say are things that you wouldn't necessarily want to hear, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. on a stage like that. So, I mean, I can understand Konami's rationale, even if it is kind of scummy, but. I mean, what, I mean, there's, there's been a, there's been know. there's it's... been some speculation uh, as to what it's about. I mean, the two big sort of reports that have come out as to why uh, Kojima and uh, Konami 
um, had these issues. I mean, both both reports point to money. So there was one report out of Japan, which was uh, run in English, I think, in VG247, uh, which was um, that there was a series uh, called Dragon Collection, uh, and it was like a mobile game, and it was made on like a super cheap budget for games development, which was like below $1 million, but it brought in a fuck ton of cash, and it really blew up, uh, you know, all the microtransactions and everything. And this is why he apparently got, got upset uh, because th they then took that model and wanted to start applying it to to his games, his vision. And obviously we know there's elements in Metal Gear Solid Five of, of microtransactions. So as a result of, of that, they, they put the, that game success, they tried to foist it off on him. He wasn't particularly excited about it, but he could have been persuaded had they offered him some sort of profit and revenue share. Well, they refused to do that. Um, so basically it was, it was we're going to put something that works for us as a company in your artistic vision, and we're not going to reward you for it. Even though it's, everyone's going to know your name's going to be on, on the game, you're not going to get a, a penny. He was just paid a, a default salary. So that was one report out of Japan. The other thing was just sort of a very more watered-down version of that, and that was um, uh, on the Codec uh, podcast where they said, again, Kojima started to feel aggrieved that he only earns a certain amount of money no matter what, uh, and that you know he's doing all this work, and they were delaying the project, putting in all these features and changing the game, and he didn't make anything from it. He didn't get uh, he didn't get a single mm -hmm. um, you know single additional penny for all the problems they faced on him. So it seems to be based around money. I mean, you know, we've talked about profit sharing and equity as well, and you know, pertaining to the Hearthstone nonsense we had recently. But um, it does seem to be. <laughs> A fairly shoddy way to treat somebody who's created one of the greatest game series of all time, and then to add the full stop to it to ban him from attending an award ceremony is just truly repulsive and repugnant. It just doesn't even seem smart from a PR standpoint. I mean, Kojima's not going to get up there and and go crazy and bash Konami. At a, well, you like, don't know that though, do you? I, Could you I guarantee would, that? I would. Of course, I can't guarantee it, but it, I mean, there, he doesn't gain anything from doing that either. You know, he I mean, doesn't so, have anything to lose, though. That's no, he does point. have. I mean, he has things to lose. Does he? I think it reflects... is he really going to be making another game? He's done with the Metal Gear Solid series. What else is he going to do? Of course, he's going to make more games. Yeah, he'll what definitely. Talking he about, he? isn't he in his like seventies? What? How old is? No, he's not. No, that, he's not that old. No, 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 he's he, he's Wikipedia. He's shit. definitely yeah, he's in his gonna 50s. Be. He's fifty-two. He's still fairly old, and I don't know. Come on, old. man. 52 ain't old. Don't fuck do this. You, man. Not with Chan Man on the show. <laughs> oh, fuck you. As not being part of as not being part of Konami. Do you think Hideo is going to go on to make more major games? Do you think that's going to happen? Yeah. Yes. For after sure. Silent Hill was canceled, after he's finished with the Metal Gear Solid series, you think he's going to go and start a whole new company yes. and then start a whole new? Okay. Doesn't it's it's not starting a whole new company. Just join a join an existing another company. game and it will yeah. be fucking awesome. Fuck he, yeah. There's still dude. life. There's still life there, man. He's still got creative ideas. He's a Look at what he did with Metal Gear Solid Five. That managed to reinvigorate a series, right? That was fucking. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I thought Metal Gear Solid Five was kind of a shit show, but. I mean, it won awards, dude. Okay, so obviously, uh, well, every people... thing, fucking Angry Birds is won awards. Metal Gear Solid yeah. Five was not up to the, the story and the writing was not up to the standard in Metal Gear Solid Three, Two, or One. Um, ever since Metal Gear Solid Four, the series has been kind of meh. Um, Five it was, was really cool because of the... Metal Gear Solid Four, right? Yeah, but Metal Gear Solid Four was the ultimate shit show in terms of story and writing. And I mean, the gameplay was okay, but it was majorly supported by Metal Gear Solid fanboys. Metal Gear Solid Five was cool because it did the open world thing pretty well, but the gameplay was fairly bland. Every mission was just go and extract him. It was pretty much every mission, and half the side content was go and extract him, or go and extract an animal, or go and extract a truck. And then the story and the writing were the worst in any Metal Gear Solid game. There are a lot of people that theorize that Hideo wasn't even the one primarily responsible for the stories um, of Metal Gear Solid, that there was a second writer that didn't oh, work yeah. he left after Metal Gear Solid 3, which is arguably the best in the entire series. Very strong arguments to that. But, but yeah. I mean, Metal Gear Solid 5 wasn't horrible by any stretch of the imagination. I just don't know if... Um, I don't... I, 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 maybe I'm more um, maybe I'm more uh, cynical. I don't know if Hideo has it in him at this age to go right now and start a whole new company and create a whole new IP that will be anywhere near as successful after having the Silent Hill project canceled and after losing Metal Gear Solid and seeing what Metal Gear Solid became after three. I don't know if Hideo has it in him to go and do. It, it, here's the thing though, like Metal Gear Solid Five, right? We know it wasn't properly finished and you know had delayed and it had all these problems. I still think uh, it's. Um... 
you know, I, I still think it's 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 an improvement on what happened. I still think it brought new elements to the to the franchise. And definitely, in terms of if you're criticizing a Metal Gear Solid game based on its writing and the storyline. Holy fucking shit. I mean, Metal Gear Solid 2, man. I thought I was on fucking acid during that shit. Like, make, you know it makes no sense. Come the fuck uh, Did you play 4, though? You want to talk about some crazy yeah, fucking yeah, mana yeah. machines? Who's the main, yeah. the main villain in Metal Gear Solid 4 is um, Ocelot, mm. whose body was taken over by Liquid Snake because of an arm <laughs> transplant and the nano machines. But in actuality, his body wasn't taken over. He just pretended his body was taken over to fool the Patriots, who are an AI system, maybe, that's trying to control the entire world. Maybe. Like, th this is a convoluted... Okay, you want to talk about <laughs> convoluted shit? Metal Gear Solid 2 is fairly convoluted, but you could follow it. If you fairly convoluted. It had 40 yeah, minutes. minutes. Four. It, was it had cutscenes that lasted 40 <laughs> okay. minutes. Okay. Metal Gear Solid 4 was... a 40-minute cutscene. You're having a 40-minute fucking cutscene. To explain all of this convoluted hey, shit. Hey, okay, well... And Metal Gear Solid 4? Dude, too close to the mic, Steven. You're, like, fucking yelling into your mic. I don't know what programs you use that my mic's not so bad. This only happens on... Is this some Skype bullshit? Oh, my God. We're not on this, Skype. We're not even on Skype. Are we? Does this... I'm killing my proxy. Tell me if I get cut off from Zoom. Oh, my gosh. But, uh... Anyways, the point is, is Rip. he's gonna get he's gonna get hired again, and I and he, I, I just think it was a it was pure. It was like when Jeff said that. I mean, the entire crowd was booing, you know, Konami, and of course people. Yeah, of course, because if you're a Metal Gear Solid fan, you like Konami, yeah, or you like, like uh, he, you know, sorry. Yeah, anyways, he's a, he's a superstar. He'll be a superstar. He'll he'll be hired again, like instantly. He'll yeah, be instantly. making another game. Yes, he'll be making another game. Like he'll sure. he'll take a fucking sabbatical yeah. right now. Spend some of his fucking six thriller that he's earned making like. <laughs> You know, all these, like, unbelievably successful franchises. And then the first games development company that's going to give him carte blanche, which I'm pretty sure all yes. fucking would, he's going to make a sick fucking game for. Exactly. Simple as that. Well, that's I, the it, only it, it might not be good in the end, but but everybody will buy the first one. I promise you. Yeah. Well, yeah, all right, yeah. yeah. If, it, if it sucks ass, I mean, it's still going to fucking, it's going to shift units, you know? Yeah, exactly. All right, let's talk about the results. Uh, so mm. I think the biggest result that, you know, a lot of, things that we expected we talked about um let me show show these real quick uh so witcher obviously witcher 3 winning mm -hmm. uh best role-playing game i think a lot of us were choosing oh that's the wrong thing shoot whoops <laughs> hold on no worries over here i'll be so, doomed to soul. <laughs> i had to turn off these sounds i didn't even uh okay uh, -oh. uh so well, yeah witcher 3 best role-playing game here yeah. And independent game Rocket League won. That was kind of cool. I, I, I mm. for some reason I didn't didn't dawn on me that Rocket League would probably win that. Uh, but the biggest surprise to me, maybe it was just me, was that the esport mm -hmm. team, best esport team, yeah, dude, ended up it's being not, Optic dude, dude, dude. Gaming. Like Optic Gaming. Holy I don't. I, I, I thought you guys don't... were on the panel to advise this shit. Dude, I what certainly happened? hope, right, listen, listen, I certainly hope that this doesn't upset anybody, but obviously, you know, I, I know the guys at Uptick, and they were like, we, we're we accepting an award we don't deserve. Like, they're, they're not under any fucking illusions about it. So, uh, yeah, it was, it, it was a fucking head scratcher for me. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, that was like, I forgot who, who were not, let me see who was nominated. I can't... I, I almost think the Optic would have been the last team I would have chosen for it. Mm. Let me see. I mean, it was like SKT, right? Yeah. Um, Fnatic. Fnatic. Oh my God, Fnatic was was the no-brainer one, right? Um, yeah, but keep in keep in mind, Fnatic because they didn't distinguish between League of Legends and CS:GO squads. It was like when they say esports team, they mean esports organization. So Fnatic have got the inarguable, like you know, number one team for most of the fucking year in Counter Strike. They got the fucking number one European team that yeah. did like all this unprecedented shit in fucking League of Legends. Like what the fuck? Like, how the fuck? <laughs> I know. How the fuck even... do you miss out to Optic, dog? Like it don't make any sense. Yeah, so that was shocking, particularly who was on but, the I mean, panel. There you too. go. So I, 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 I didn't I realize this. I thought we, you know, I thought we were gonna have like a bit more input in it, but yeah. it looks like it was a fan vote. So there's your problem. I mean, like optic fans are pretty fucking goddamn loyal. There ain't no doubt about that. Well, that's true. So yeah. So any think... any other of these results surprise you? Hmm. Uh, you I mean, right now? just uh, let me, let me looking things, down yeah. at them all. Um. I mean, I was well, I was super psyched for The Witcher 3 to get uh, best role-playing game. It's not a surprise. Yeah. It's just 
it's just worth noting that uh, this was a you know the, the, the this was a game that was developed um you know kind of not not doing what you're supposed to as a games developer you know people were being told you know you want to scale down and get a multiplayer mode here's a fucking solely single player game uh people were told oh you know you don't want to fucking put too many things in well okay they've done that they've done all sorts of shit you can play gwent for like fucking 30 hours and not get bored of it, <laughs> right like they, they, they've yeah. also refused yeah. to fucking um you know, bow down, like, pressure, like, oh, hey, why aren't there more people of color in the Slavic region in medieval oh, times? I remember hearing a few yeah, well, I, yeah, maybe because, like, fuck it, like, tokenism is such a cool thing and really helps with uh, race relations. It doesn't put anyone anyone's nose out of joint. It doesn't feel like a super insulting thing that you do just to placate fucking groups who believe they're marginalized. Absolutely ridiculous. They refuse to bow down to that shit. Uh, they, they, they put a respectful fucking dlc model out for gamers that didn't fucking rinse you they released free dlc like every week for like the first 16 <laughs> weeks of release or whatever the fuck yep. it was like fucking more awards please like you cannot hold uh these people to a fucking higher regard so uh it's got to be worth mentioning uh esports game of the year fucking uh, it's counter strike global offensive baby it you fucking are. had to be right yeah that's like a no-brainer too but then again, Optic Gaming was not a no-brainer, so never know yeah. what happens there. Maybe Hearthstone would have made it on there. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, um, you know, uh, I was super happy about that because, like, traditionally, like Counter Strike's always been fucking marginalized and not really recognized, and like it just had this huge breakout year. So uh, I'm so glad. Obviously, it won the award. Kenny S got Esports Player of the Year. Super happy for him. Uh, he had one of the more interesting stories mm -hmm. over the course of 2015. So not a lot of surprises in there. Um, you know, Project Red, of course, got developer, you know, behind The Witcher 3, so that ties in with everything I was just saying. So yeah. there weren't really a lot of surprises there. Um, don't, do we, I don't know about Mortal Kombat 10. Uh, yeah, but I wasn't sure either between the, the yeah. just the others because I, I wasn't following the fighting games that closely. Uh, sad that Bloodborne didn't get anything. God, Bloodborne's such yeah. a good game. They, they just, I was always saying, they're just like the Shawshank Redemption of this year. They had mm -hmm. to be on the same year as Witcher, so that, that really screwed them. And they, oh. they would have won all the awards in any other year, probably. I mean, is it worth talking about the trending gamer award? <laughs> Greg? Yeah. Hey, Greg Miller. Yeah. Well, that, that whole category was just whatever. Yeah, it's whatever, I mean, but it's I mean, just... you know? Who would you have chosen then? Well, I just think with everything John's gone yeah, through this fucking year, it had to be TB. I man. would have chosen TB too, but still, it's kind of, I don't even know what it's based on. It's like trending gamer. What the hell does that mean? I mean obviously, this is the, this is basically, this is the award for best agent right that, <laughs> for that's much. what it really yeah. is yeah? yeah whoever whoever won this award clearly had the best agent yeah um, okay but but you know like i i, I don't know I, I think i saw a tweet from jenna um <laughs> uh about about saying like didn't john not get his last award from them did i imagine uh, that did he not get an award what do you mean yeah i, I think he was awarded something and then it, it didn't it, oh he like, just never received actually, it yeah well, he never i received think so. it. Oh, i don't know no. I, fuck I, knows yeah, maybe i'm imagining that but like for, just for me with the year he's had you know and they still continue to put out yeah. like all this fucking amazing work how he's continued to represent consumer interests uh and, and just actually mm -hmm. bring honest critique to a fucking heavily politicized industry of lies yeah you know i i, I think I, I think it can only be commended so uh sure. yeah it was true. uh it was it was it was real fucked up not to see him get that award in my opinion no agreed definitely agree with that i guess the only thing i'll point out is did, had, did you guys ever play that game her story did that the one that won best narrative and best performance no. w wasn't that the one that had like a bunch of almost like police clips of like an interview like a, a woman being interviewed by the police and you go through all the clips mm. and you try to solve a mystery type of thing do you ever hear this game steven you I, this game? i've heard i've heard of something okay, like that yeah. i mean there's been a there's been a few games kind of based on that you know you're starting to see more of that kind of uh interactive fiction uh genre uh which yeah. is you know interesting it's it's been like kind of a growth genre in terms of i usually don't like it chat but let me see her story was absolute shit. Okay, I guess some people didn't. A lot of people didn't like it here. So, uh, but yeah, they won two awards. So I, I didn't. I didn't really hear that much about it. So mm. I, I took a look at it. The the 
the trailer is was uh, a little bit interesting. Anyways, yeah, so it sounded like, or at least the the event from a broadcasting standpoint was seemed to be a success. I mean, it, it like was well over a hundred thousand, and Twitch was even like encouraging people to to rebroadcast it on their channels. Mm. And which mm. is that's pretty rare, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, we don't like how many things does, is Twitch okay with us rebroadcasting? Mm. Very, very few is the answer. So uh, I think that probably helped too. But cool. I mean, it's good. I, I think it's generally good to have a a central award platform uh, that eventually develops enough uh, consistency and respect that people can, you know, there's some value to it. Mm. Definitely. Um. So just just. Linking back to what we started the show with, with the yeah. riot changes, there's sure. been a, a few interesting developments while we've been on air. Oh. Obviously, people uh, people from Riot have to watch what I'm saying. They can't help themselves. I love it so much just knowing <laughs> that uh, right, uh, Richard Lewis is on air. Quick, get somebody to see what he's saying about us. Uh, so the Twitch arm of, of Riot Games, a.k.a. Nick Allen, uh, <laughs> oh, um, a man who curiously <laughs> tweets about riots as, as much as he does about the company that employs him, uh, he he okay. tweeted while we were on air saying Riot Europe has its own league ops team and makes decisions that they think will be best for their region. It is an NA making decisions for EU. Well, how very fucking interesting uh, that you would decide to tweet that while we're on air and I've made the exact opposite point. But anyway, the, 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 the reality is that that has always not been the case when it comes to disciplinary stuff. Anybody who's been through a disciplinary will tell you this, uh, you know, that uh, it, it happened with the incarnation thing, for example, uh, when it got banned from the studios, uh, the, the EU, uh, the EU um, staff had allowed him to go to the studio, it allowed him to be a coach for SK Gaming when Worlds came around. NA basically wanted to just, you know, well, we're not having him on stage. So it's all, it's, uh, uh, it's all, and then EU had to come out and say, oh, well, we never officially endorsed him. No, you gave him a fucking pass that said coach on it and let him into the building and watched him coach. So the idea that there's not like some internal conflict there is just fucking hilarious. Uh, and the other thing is they're starting to reply in the Reddit thread. They have dispatched the dogs of PR. What and, Reddit, uh, there's, what Reddit there's a, thread? The, the Reddit thread talking about these format changes. Oh, okay. And uh, there's some uh, guy called Jason Oliver in there. He's obviously drawn the short straw. Uh, and is in there trying to explain it all. And he says, again, proving that the EU League Ops team made this and NA had nothing to do with it. Uh, we, the EU League Ops team, felt like BO2 was the preferred format to use next summer for the reasons stated in the post and this thread, uh, matchup symmetry, broadcast schedule, meaningfulness of every match. Additionally, we want to look for ways to cater to the esports ecosystem to the makeup of each region. So despite the fact that NA and EULCS were set up as system of leagues, going forward, we will look to adapt to each ecosystem uh, to the nuance of each region. That's the spin, boys. That's the bullshit. We now want to cater to ecosystem. <laughs> of course, that was going to be it. I mean, what do you? I mean, that's. I mean, that, what? What else did you think they were going to say? I'll send. I'll send this to Stephen because obviously. Yeah, wait, let me see the link. Yeah, I mean, you, you and you enjoy retarded. Uh, <laughs> Babble, yeah, but that's a, that's what was expected to be coming out of them. I mean, well, no, but I, I get it. It's just, it's just the fucking, it's the sheer goal. They have given zero fucks about the esports ecosystem for like as long as they've been around six fucking years uh, since they've been active with League of Legends. The, they have done all they can to pervert, subvert, uh, and do everything else they can to the ecosystem for their own benefit. In fact. They don't. They didn't even recognize other games' rights to exist. Can you? What does this mean? If you win one match, you get one point. That is a big difference in best of two versus best of three, where marginally better teams can pull away and table with multiple two-one wins. Aren't mm. you supposed to pull away if you're winning sets? What? I don't understand. <laughs> What does yeah. that mean? It's not yeah. fair that people are winning series, are winning best of threes and pulling away because they're winning the series? What What does that even mean? Could you Can you explain what that means? No, but, but this is the thing, Stephen. It doesn't mean anything. It's just this guy is the fucking guy in Riot's offices who has been told there is a shit show. We gone done fucked up again. Now go out and make it look like we didn't fuck up quite as bad as we fucked up. And now he's just got a tight, meaningless shit. I mean, I'm trying to think of the last guy it happened with. Was it? Is, is his name Fwiz or something? I can't even remember. Uh, no, no, Fwiz. No, it's is not Fwiz. Fwiz. Right. Come on, Fwiz. No, Fwiz it's fucking uh, it's something like that. Uh, anyway, fuck knows. It, it's like a Fwiz. It sounds like that. Whatever. This Riot guy <laughs> had to go on and, and uh, explain, like, changes they were making to, like, the fucking 
meta game and things they were taking out. And he was the guy that fucking said, we can't have a sandbox mode because it increases toxicity. That poor fuck got told to say that by someone in Riot. And it, it'll, it'll haunt him for the rest of his time until he gets spent and gets out of the cult and gets fucking deprogrammed and his three-year-long NDA expires. Uh, you know, like, th that guy had to say sandbox mode encourages toxicity and say it seriously and say it on Reddit, say it on the internet where it's going to last forever. And they're not content with making him do that. Riot then made him retract it and say, I wasn't told to say that. I just kind of, it's my personal opinion. The way they oh, treat wow. yeah, it's unreal. They set them up for the fall. Do you think Quickshot really thinks Bjergsen's better than Faker? Do you really think he believes that? Of course Trevor doesn't fucking believe that. He's not an idiot. But they have to get somebody to say these things and to, 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 to have these dis this illusion of reasonableness and dissenting opinion and to hype up their product. So they just go, hey, we fucking pay you. You're nothing without us, right? So get the fuck over here. Say this dumb thing and you live with the consequences. That's Riot fucking games. All right. All right, enough right around here. Okay, next topic we've got. Oh, I see a CSGO top here. So the E League was announced with yeah. uh, details and all that good stuff. And for those of you that are wondering what the E League is, it's uh, this is the the CSGO League that Turner, you know, is is creating. And they they basically have a website now, which I'll show you here in just a second. And here, let me show you guys. Whoops, it's wrong thing. Okay, here we go. All right, so yeah, so they have a uh, website now. They've named it E League, which is an interesting name for a, a, a league. I'm not sure what you guys think of that that name. I mean, it's not it's not a super uh, exciting name, but here's the problem: <laughs> if you get into the realm of maybe giving it a bit more zing. Uh, for the benefit of the esports audience, maybe you isolate casual viewers. Let's not forget this is going to be on a mainstream TV broadcast. Yes. So I think it needs to have a very, uh, dare I say, conservative name that everybody can kind of grasp and understand. So, I, 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 you know, yeah, it, it's definitely not going to set my creative fucking juices flowing <laughs> when I hear like E League. But obviously, that's me. I worked in this industry all this time. You know, I'm, I'm definitely going to be desensitized. I've seen all sorts of crazy shit names for leagues. But you know, yeah, this yeah. is um, this is obviously for the purposes of a TV broadcast. So I it's think a, I think E League is very functional functional in that sense. So details of the leagues: so, uh, it's going to be 1.2 million prize pool per season. There'll be two seasons per year, so a total of 2.4 million in total, which is quite that's a lot. And mm -hmm. so that's that's really great. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be really great for the teams and and you know for this being you know just uh, the biggest foot forward you know in terms of being on TV for CS:GO. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's pretty cool that the prize is going to be that much. I, so I was, you know, watching some of the tweets, you know, just going on, and um, wanted to get your opinions on, on just what you think of of just the details of how the setup. First, is. first can I just point out because obviously I've got my little, um, you know, I've got my little people that I do like to have fucking just running battles with, right? Being one of them. Oh god! Uh, gonna... So so slasher, no no no, Sla slasher oh, uh, was, was like okay. he tweeted about this. And he was like, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it's not clear if it's going to be like, you know, one point two million dollars a season or whatever. Oh, it's okay. like, dude, dude, why didn't you just ask him? That's what I did, and I found out, and then I tweeted it and gave everybody the right information. I think it's called journalism or something. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the little, um, yeah, the so I mean, the there. prize, the prize money is great, um, and uh, you know, from a Counter Strike perspective, uh, there are some serious questions to ask about how it impacts on the overall ecosystem mm -hmm. uh because obviously when you have a league that takes up 20 weeks out of a year and offers a portion a proportion of prize money greater than even the major tournaments which are obviously um the valve crowdfunded ones uh it, it does it does raise questions about you know, can we can we not have can, can we have a league that, like that and still have the majors retain their same spectacle so maybe we need to do something about that moving forward. Of course, it's not it's all about the prize money with majors. This is a misconception a lot of people make. The stickers that get sold will always make uh, more money. Uh, you know, four point two million going into the hands of teams and players yeah. last last uh, time around. 
Um, and I, I, I think even while we're seeing diminishing returns on the stickers, I think Valve can sort of um, reinvigorate how we do things, you know, come up with some new ideas and maybe make stickers that are going to have lasting value so people keep buying them and keep putting the money in the hands of the organizations and the players that they care about. But ultimately, $2.4 million over the course of a year, no less than Counter-Strike deserves. Uh, and this is going to be uh, a league that I'm, I'm really excited to watch, uh, to watch play out because I think for the first time, we're going to get a, an equivalent of an LCS format. Mm -hmm. And it's not online. It's at LAN. It's, it's going to have a live uh, studio audience. Yeah, the, the uh, schedule looks like, I mean, every Friday night, right, there's going to be mm. basically matches in the studio, right? Mm. Um, and there's going to be, just, yeah, like you said, just LAN. There's going to be a lot, of, a lot of matches that are going to be there, not online. Uh, mm. So that's going to be great. So I did see Scoots, you know, mentioning that, there won't be all the teams there. Like at one point, he was tweeting, uh, "Is it going to be? It's going to be available." I haven't followed Scott's Twitter actually oh, for a few I, days because he's, I been, he's been. I've been too scared to look at it since yeah, what happened so, at DreamHack. Well, I wasn't so, aware. Uh, I mean, I was under the assumption that all the best teams would be participating in that league. Is that not the case? Well, look. Here's the here's the thing that no one's really talking about. Uh, Turner obviously want all the best teams in their league yeah the only reason there's any stalling and any posturing is from the teams themselves not the teams as in the players but the team owners oh i see that so i mean we've been in this situation where there is still talk about exclusivity going around for things like for example the esl esea pro league or leagues that don't even exist yet <laughs> now keep in mind we know about this grand prix that's going to be announced next year with gfinity and face it and pgl and uh mlg and they're saying we're going to have a grand prix circuit and mm -hmm. we're all going to work together and we're yeah. not and you could be in the turn league if you want we're not going to demand any exclusivity people still think the mtg arm of things the other side of the equation people think they're still pushing for exclusivity they still talk about them even maybe looking at um you know franchising out the teams having their own leagues and a way you will have to show fealty now this has left team owners with a a, a dilemma because the Turner League is offering them a chance to be on TV. The Turner League is offering them a chance to bring in huge sponsors, as well as letting them keep their endemic sponsors, right? Mm -hmm. So you get to keep all your endemics. And let's say, for example, if Coca-Cola wanted to sponsor the E-League, everyone's going to get a share of the Coca-Cola money as well, right? So they're offering people that. And there's no exclusivity beyond it being implied. As in, it's a 10-week league. Mm -hmm. You all need to be out here playing your games. And they run for, uh, like Thursday to Sunday or whatever. So you can't attend any events in the meantime. Now, uh, I think my understanding is the other uh, exclusivity leagues that are still maybe being percolated and the other as of yet non-existent leagues, they're offering financial incentives, very large financial incentives for exclusivity because it's the teams that are going to give value to the league. I so see. the owners are trying to think, is there a way we can double dip? Some <laughs> of course, are, of course. Because that's team owners. Is, 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 which, which deal is better for us? Is being on TV the better option? Yeah, is that going to help? Thing you know, to do. Yeah, yeah they're, right. they're trying to weigh up all of the ways that this pans out financially. So that's why we're not at a stage where we can announce all of the teams that are going to be. Uh, I see. Okay. That's, I, I just... that's all it is. But there, there have been teams who you can see have clearly committed. Mm -hmm. uh, to the turn league because they're in the promotional video. Yeah, and and that that was uh, another uh, thing that people were speculating. Like they were already getting B rolls of a lot of the teams that were. Yeah, yeah, and they've been coming mm -hmm. to all the events. And yeah. the other uh, point, and I will make it briefly because I'm worried about Destiny. He's not spoken for a while. <laughs> but uh, the um the 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 other issue uh, you've got is that the we try. Right. So what we're trying to do is we're, we're trying to get the best teams, but the best teams might not be with the organizations that attended the tournament meeting. For example, we've seen TSM and their Danish team, who was probably like, I don't know, uh, you know number two in the world uh, at their peak. Uh, some people would have said number one, I think, TSM fans, I guess we would call them. But number two at the peak, uh, they currently don't have an organization. They've not announced a new organization. Now, you want that team in the league because they're the players, Okay, they don't have a home yet, so Turner don't even know which organization they're going to have to sit down and have talks with to bring them into the league. Yeah. Meanwhile, TSM, who have already been at the Turner meeting and have already had talks with Turner, they don't have a team anymore. So they've got to go get another team. Mm, okay. So you have situations like this, this general instability, because no one wanted to sign 
uh, contracts for 2016 now. Yeah, so early. No one's it's pretty do tough. That. You don't even know what the lay of the land is. You don't even know what the best deals are going to be. So, I mean, that, 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 that was another problem that hindered being able to announce all of the teams. Hmm. So it's not like, okay. again, you know me, if you know how I feel about big businesses when they come into Wii Sports? I'd fucking rip Turner if uh, they were um, doing anything that was negative. This isn't really a Turner issue. This isn't... Uh, uh, this is this is to do timing. with it's more time than the, anything. Yeah, the ecosystem and the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it's exciting news. Definitely going to be. I think everybody's going to be be watching this. And if you heard anything, Richard, are you going to be be doing any of this? You know me, Not man. Yet. I, 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 I like I'm I'm available for work more so <laughs> now than ever. Um, yeah. Now that I don't have the portion of uh, the DreamHack to a. Uh, um, on on my calendar, um, I, I I've always maintained good relationships with Face It. As I said, when mm -hmm. the DreamHack issue went down, it was Face It that came out and fought for me to go back on air so we could close out the show rather than using a stand-in host. Um, you know, so and, and and I've I've watched them grow. I was I was there at the beginning. I, I worked in the studios in Milan, so I got a lot of respect there. Uh, if they think. You know, because um, they're partnered with Turner, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, if them and Turner think I'm a guy who can do a job, um, then yeah, obviously I'd love to be part of something that big. But, you know, there's nothing um, confirmed yet. There's nothing official yet. And, uh, you know, whatever happens, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly enjoy covering the league from a press perspective because I think it's going to be one of the most exciting things to happen to Counter-Strike, any version of Counter-Strike, uh, in a long, long time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. One hundred percent. Steven. What are you even playing, Doug? I know exactly. I'm not playing anything. I'm just reading chat and reading just keeping up on everything. No, you fucking ain't, man. I can hear you button back. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm just typing a little got... bit. No, I'm clearly not clicking. You don't you hear got... my mouse going off at all. What game can you play with only your keyboard, Rich Lewis? Come on. Well, I'll I'll tell you when we're off air, Steven. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to be doing Q&A here shortly. We're going to take a quick break, but uh, post your questions here. Just a reminder that we this is the last day for the T-shirts. that We've actually sold, what, six of them now since we've been on air, so that's pretty cool. But mm -hmm. this is the last day to, to snag those T-shirts. If we don't reach that 100 goal, guys, uh, the shirts are still uh, sent out to you guys, so it's not one of those those teespring goals where it's like if you don't reach the goal then nobody gets anything kind of thing mm -hmm. uh so don't worry about that you're definitely going to be get, you're seeing a shirt once once the campaign's over which will be tomorrow uh but another plug for our patreon too we have a patreon for unfiltered at www.patreon.com unfiltered and big thanks to all the patrons so far. It's been awesome. This is, I mean, you guys are the ones that support the show and keep the show going. So if you enjoy the show, please contribute to the show uh, because, again, that's the, the main, main way that this show continues. Uh, but we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back with your questions for Q&A. All right. BRB then.